Hey friends, how are you? Sean Ferry here for Trek Culture, and we're going to go through the recent bit of news that came out about Star Trek Picard. Or, well, if not Star Trek Picard specifically, then certainly Star Trek involving Picard. First of all, I hope you're all well and Happy New Year to you all. Thank you all so much for your support. You are awesome. We are getting so close to 300,000 subscribers now, so thank you again. Everyone who likes and shares and subscribes, like, you really do make a difference. I know we keep saying this to a blue in the face, but I just want you to know how much we appreciate it. All right, so thank you, Yazar, Yazar Deadly. Shall we discuss this news? Right, okay, so Anthony Pascal of Trek Movie reported the other day that in an interview on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast with Josh Horowitz, Patrick Stewart revealed that a script for a potential new Picard movie was being written. This was, uh, this was recorded, it was confirmed, Trek Movie confirmed with Horowitz, so this was uh, recorded in November when Stewart was doing the rounds for his memoir, Making It So. And what I wanted to say, first of all, is exciting. This is brilliant. This is exciting news. And, you know, Patrick Stewart has been quite vocal, particularly in 2023, that as Star Trek Picard continued, he was less and less finished with the role than we may have potentially expected before this. This only throws more and more petrol on that fire. So that's that's the first thing that I'm, I'm really, really happy about. The second thing I'm gonna say is let's all of us temper expectations. Ah, uh, here it comes party pooper Sean is. <laughs> but yes, I would imagine that between the closing credits of The Last Generation and today, Dozens of scripts have been written featuring Jean-Luc Picard and perhaps the entire crew of the Enterprise. Positive of that is that I don't think we're ever going to have a dearth when it comes to ideas for new stories. I myself probably have about 10 ideas and I am not being self-effacing when I say not very likely that I'm going to be commissioned to write a Star Trek Picard movie. Uh, I don't take it personally. It's okay. They're just very, you know, they, they don't know any better. They'll call me eventually. Don't worry, folks. Don't worry. My point is that a script being written is something somebody could be doing as a hobby. What makes this different is that it's Patrick Stewart saying this. Now, that's where I'm a little more optimistic than, say, just hearing a script is being written because it's Patrick Stewart himself who's confirmed this. And that automatically gives it much more credence and much more standing. Um, and quite frankly, is why we're doing a video about it. If you look at Paramount's sort of official slate, you know, there's no Star Trek legacy on any kind of official slate. We know that Discovery is coming to an end this year, I can now say. We know that Starfleet Academy is on the way. Strange New Worlds is going to continue. It looks very different going into 2024 than it did even going into 2023. There's less content, which makes the idea of doing movies a little bit more attractive, perhaps. But officially, the only thing they've talked about, and again, I, I, you know, not back to Trek Movies article here, is that they've only confirmed that they are working on Star Trek IV, a Kelvin Universe movie starring Chris Pine. Now, here's what I feel about that, is that, I mean, I'd watch it again in a heartbeat, but, and this terrifies me to say this, we're coming up on 10 years since the last Kelvin Universe movie. All right, I'm, I don't mean to be wishing time away. It's, uh, we've only gone into the eighth year. One wonders, has the moment passed? Now, I mean, I would watch another movie again in a heartbeat. Um, my excitement maybe isn't what it once was. Thoroughly enjoyed Star Trek Beyond. I really did. I thought it was a great standalone adventure. Yeah, I'm sure there was some bits that were stronger than others, but it's like any film, right? If everyone could be convinced to come back, um, and from various interviews, I think they could be, I would be so on board for that. As the entire landscape of Star Trek has effectively changed, I mean, all of the current and ending TV series or streaming series all came after Star Trek Beyond. Now, that's a little bit more bonkers when you think of how much has been crammed in to the last eight years. That's a lot of content. 
And I don't feel that we're at franchise fatigue stage, thankfully, and I mean that. I'm, wo I'm worried about where the Kelvin universe would fit into that. With the Section 31 Long Trek hopefully coming out in 2024, although it remains to be seen, whether it be 2024 or 2025, it's been previously stated that it was the hope that this Long Trek would be the start of a slew of Long Treks that would be exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. If this script that Patrick Stewart is talking about went into production, I think it could be a very good contender for another Long Trek. We're going to go into a bit of speculation for a second, and let's say that it picks up after the end of Season 3 of Star Trek Picard. Um, odds are, if you were watching this news video, you've probably seen Star Trek Picard, but just in case, spoilers. You know, what we have from that last episode, the entire crew is they're retired, but they're back together, presumably still playing poker in 10 forward. Jack has been approached by Q and has been told that he's got so many more things to do. The Enterprise G is flying off with Captain Seven at the helm. So it's pretty open-ended, really. So if this is a Picard-centric story, which it might not be, it might just feature Jean-Luc, that's the other thing. But let's say this is a Picard-centric story. Right, where, where do we go from here? I mean, he looks pretty chill. He's got his friends and family about him. Now, if it's, you know, Star Trek Picard, The Wrath of Laris, I'm here for that. At, at the risk of it becoming a bit of an old joke, it would be nice to have at least one acknowledgement that there was at least a phone call from Jean-Luc to be like, Hiya, I'll be with you in two days. You won't believe the week I've had. What's the threat? So the Borg are done. Perhaps forever, perhaps for now. There's still a huge Romulan question to deal with. Um, as the Romulan reclamation, the Free State has, in my opinion, never been successfully uh, dealt with. And considering it's the jumping off point for everything, including the Kelvin universe, let us not forget, that it could be a good way of perhaps bringing some universes together. We all love a crossover. Jo I joke, I joke, right? But if you look back on our channel and you see the numbers that the video on the Lower Deck Strange New Worlds crossover did, we all love a crossover, apparently. That could be, now I'm just coming up with ideas on the fly here, but you know, that could easily be a way of getting some of the Kelvin Universe characters together with the Prime Universe characters. Because as it stands, the only really spoken acknowledgements either side are, of course, Leonard Nimoy in the Kelvin films and Lieutenant Yor in Star Trek Discovery. You know, so I mean, it's in canon that, yes, both universes exist. So maybe let's... Let's marry the... Should we ruin the Mirror Universe every second Tuesday? You'd think we would have nipped over to the Kelvin Universe for a while. Okay, perhaps some of the people in the Kelvin Universe are a bit... What's the word? Expensive? It being a movie, you know, you could have something akin to Star Trek Generations and how William Shatner appeared in Star Trek Generations. It wasn't a Kirk film, but Kirk played a very important role. That, I would imagine would perhaps be a, a good way of getting Picard into a new film. It would have to be something satisfactory. Patrick Stewart is well on record of saying he only wants to do something different. He doesn't want to do any rehashing or, you know, just appearing for the sake of. Sometimes I think we all of us, including myself, can look at an actor not returning to a role and we see the reason being that there wasn't enough there. Ah, uh, you know, we think, well, what's, what are you talking about? And, you know, you're going to be on Star Trek. Ah, exact quote. In my old age, I, I, I've come to understand a little bit better that, yes, there's the excitement that must come with being in Star Trek. And also the frustration of just kind of being there. Using the example of Star Trek Generations, Leonard Nimoy turned down an appearance as Spock, because it doesn't do anything for the character. There's no reason for him to be there other than he's just there. Uh, whereas in fairness, William Shatner, Kirk had something to do. Whether you agree it was very much or not, he had something to do. So as we look at a Picard long trek, I don't think Patrick Stewart is going to come back just to break the bottle of champagne against, if there is now to be a USS Picard, um, 
or, or, or something like that. I don't think he would do that. I think he would have to be, it, there, there would have to be a reason for him to be there. And again, coming full circle, the reason that makes it, you know, excited that he spoke about this script is because I don't think he would have bothered if there wasn't a decent idea with the character. With everyone being alive and well at the end of Star Trek Picard, and still uh, frustratingly, you know, frustrating silence from Paramount and CBS about, you know, any potential, yes, okay, Star Trek legacy, but any potential 25th century show. Uh, and again, it's frustrating because just tell us if it's a no. It's very open-ended as to what could go where. Um, Pascal reports on Trek movie that if there was to be a Picard long trek, it could easily serve as a backdoor pilot for any new series. I'm in two minds about that. One is, I don't think we need Star Trek Picard 2. Uh, I think that story's been told. Which is why, on that, I was initially a little surprised that there's any talk of a Picard long trek. And please don't get me wrong, it's not that I'm not interested in it, it's not that I don't want to see the character anymore. I do, I just feel like the story's complete. I think the only direction they can go in is to kill him. And they've done that already. This is why I haven't been commissioned to write the story. So, okay, so, you know, as, as, a, as a backdoor pilot, give us a buddy, you know, comedy, if you like, Picard and Seven. Dissatisfaction, if you like, with season two of Star Trek Picard is that we almost had that between Seven and Raffi. And I think they would got just got a little bit lost amid everything else going on in season two of Picard. If you were to just get Jerry Ryan and Patrick Stewart and have them head up a two hour long trek, I think that could be gold. And you could have any number of plot threads introduced that a potential spin-off or new series could pick up from. There's your backdoor pilot. You're concentrating, obviously, on Picard, but as much on Picard as Seven. Of course, I mean, you want to see everyone back again, don't you? But I, I, I think there's, there's a contract somewhere in Paramount Studios under lock and key that says, if it's got Star Trek in the title, Jonathan Frakes has to be involved. Uh, and I very much would like that contract to stay in good condition forever. <coughs> Direct it. There's any number of ways that they could all be in it, or none of them, or, or, or whomever. Like, that could be fun, or, or, or I don't know. Other characters all together bring back Cisco. What do you think would be a good use of a two-hour long trek? We'll, we'll call it the Picard movie. Just see you know, that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it simple like that. If there is to be one, and Patrick Stewart is to be in it, what would you like to see? Um, do we kill him in the opening credits? Sounds very bloodthirsty, doesn't it? You know, do we uh, bring the Borg back? Do we deal with the Romulans? How would Seven interact with the Romulans? Do we... I, I am not satisfied in any way with how Nerissa was written out in season one. We saw her fall, we didn't see her hit the ground. You know? Perhaps she would like something to say to Seven after that kick to the chest. Um, something like that. There's, there's any number of open plot threads that we could then weave some new plot threads in and out of. We will bring you more if and when news on this comes up. Until then, make sure that you are liking, sharing and subscribing. Again, thank you so much. You are awesome and you are wonderful. Please make sure you're following us over on the socials. We're at Trek Culture on Twitter. We're at Trek Culture YT on Instagram. And we, of course, are on TikTok on Blue Sky as well. I will put something on those accounts. We are there. It is us. Uh, I'm at Sean Ferrick. You can find me on the various socials. And of course, don't forget to follow Chris at Edit Chris Edit on both Twitter and Instagram as well. Until I'm talking to you again, make sure that you look after yourselves, make sure that you live long and prosper, and let's make sure that 2024 is a peaceful and warm year. If we can look after anyone, let's try and look after our community and then those around us, and let's just keep paying it forward. You look after yourselves, folks, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much.